bad wire management at your PC is an eyesore. But bad wire management in your shoulder will leave your arm sore. And unlike your rat's nest of cables under your desk, will actually hurt your performance. If you've ever felt that nagging, tingling in your hand during an intense gaming session, or maybe your arm feels unusually heavy after a long day at your desk, you might be experiencing thoracic outlet syndrome, the sneaky condition that affects up to 8% of the population and is especially common amongst gamers, desk workers, and artists. Let's dive into what's really going on and how you can fix it. Think of your thoracic outlet as a busy highway system where important nerves and blood vessels travel from your neck down into your arm. This highway has three major tunnels where traffic jams, or compression, can occur. The scalene triangle represents the first potential compression point. This space is formed by two neck muscles, the anterior and the middle scalenes, and your first rib, creating a tunnel where compression happens. When these muscles become tight from prolonged forward head posture, they can compress these important nerves and blood vessels that pass through. The costoclavicular space forms the second potential compression point. This area lies between your collarbone and the first rib, creating a tight corridor that neurovascular structures must navigate. Poor posture, especially the rounded shoulders, can narrow the space further and increase compression on these vital structures. The subcoracoid space represents the final checkpoint. This passage runs beneath your pectoralis minor muscle, which often becomes tight in gamers and desk workers due to prolonged internal rotation of the shoulders. When this muscle shortens, it can create a pressing force on the neurovascular bundle passing underneath it. Here's where your gaming or work setup comes into play. That forward head position you slip into during those intense sessions? That's caused by low endurance of your deep neck flexor muscles, which are responsible for keeping your neck in an upright posture. This causes your scalene muscles to work overtime to try to pick up the slack to keep your head up. The scalene muscles are primarily movement muscles and aren't designed to hold your neck upright all the time. And they can get tired and irritated, which causes them to tighten down as a protective response. And those rounded shoulders from hours of sitting? That's due to weak upper back muscles between your shoulder blades not being able to keep your upper back straight due to low endurance, which causes your chest muscles, especially the pec minor, to get increasingly tight. If you have the double whammy of forward head and rounded shoulders, it's called upper cross syndrome. And it's the biggest predisposing factor for developing TOS in people that play or work in a seated position. Thoracic outlet comes in three major flavors. And much like ice cream, you can have just one kind or a combination of all three. Unlike ice cream, none of them are delicious. Neurogenic TOS is the most common form, accounting for 90 to 95% of all cases. Patients typically experience tingling sensations and pain that radiate down the arm, most commonly affecting the nerves that go to the pinky and ring fingers, but can affect any of the nerves in the arm, so your symptoms may be anywhere below the shoulder. This occurs when the brachial plexus, which is essentially your arm's nerve superhighway, becomes compressed at one or more of the thoracic outlet tunnels. Think of it like bad wire management. The nerves are the wires that connect your skin and your muscles to your brain, and vice versa. If those are pinched, you are going to start feeling weird sensations like numbness, tingling, and pain. The symptoms often worsen during gaming sessions or prolonged computer use. If the compression goes on for long enough, you can experience weakness in any of the muscle groups in the arm, which can also lead to overuse injuries. Venus TOS manifests through a visible change in your arm's appearance and sensation. The affected arm may become swollen and take on a bluish or purple tint due to compromised blood flow returning through that compressed vein in the thoracic outlet. You might experience a persistent feeling of heaviness in the arm as if you've just completed an intense workout. This form of TOS is particularly concerning for competitive gamers who maintain static arm positions for extended periods. Arterial TOS, while the least common, can be the most severe form. Your hand might feel unusually cold and appear pale due to a reduced blood flow through the compressed arteries. You may notice weakness during gaming or work sessions and experience cramping with continued activity. You can also experience numbness and tingling due to nerves losing their blood supply. These symptoms tend to be more pronounced during intense work or play sessions when blood flow demands to the hands are higher. While only a healthcare professional can provide a definitive diagnosis, there are several self-assessment techniques you can use to better understand your symptoms. Remember, these tests should never cause significant pain or discomfort. If they do, stop immediately and consult a healthcare provider. The first test is the elevated arm stress test, also known as the ruse test. It is particularly useful for identifying vascular compression. To do this test, raise both your arms up into a stick-up position with elbows bent at 90 degrees. Slowly open and close your fists for three minutes. Watch for these signs of vascular TOS. Significant fatigue or heaviness in your arms. Color changes in your hands if they become pale or blue. Having to lower your arms before the three minutes are up. 
numbness or tingling that develops during the test. The pectoralis minor muscle can often be a key player in TOS. Here's how to check if it's involved. Stand in a doorway with your arm positioned at shoulder height, elbow bent to 90 degrees. Place your forearm against the door frame. Step forward through the doorway while keeping your arm in position. If you experience tingling down your arm into your fingers, heaviness or fatigue in the arm, reproduction of your typical symptoms, this suggests pec minor involvement in your TOS symptoms. The scalene muscles in your neck can compress the thoracic outlet. Here's how to assess them. Sitting comfortably, put your hand on your shoulder by your collarbone you are testing. Gently tilt your head away from the symptomatic side. Add a small amount of rotation towards the same side as the tilt. Hold this position for 10 to 15 seconds. You might have scaling involvement if you experience tingling or numbness that travels down your arm, a feeling of heaviness or fatigue in the arm, recreation of any of your usual symptoms, and sometimes even slight dizziness or visual changes. This is rare, but it's possible due to arterial compression. Remember that these tests are not a definitive diagnostic tool. They're tools to help you better understand your symptoms. Multiple positive tests often provide more reliable information than a single test alone. Additionally, never force any position that causes pain. Stop immediately if you're experiencing severe symptoms and use these tests as a guide for a discussion with healthcare professionals. Keep track of which of these tests reproduce your symptoms and how quickly they develop. If you're experiencing positive findings with any of these tests, it's worth consulting with a healthcare professional for a proper evaluation. At 1HP, we can help you interpret these findings and develop an appropriate strategy for treatment. The thoracic outlet at its core is an endurance problem, with tight muscle patterns forming as compensation for low endurance. There are three main strategies for addressing thoracic outlet syndrome. Endurance training for the fatigued out postural support muscles, stretching for the tight overworked movement muscles cosplaying as postural support muscles, and nerve glides to free up the entrapped nerves. If the compression site is at the scalenes, these exercises are great for building the postural endurance of the deep neck flexors, which will offload the scalene muscles. Isometric chin tucks are a great place to start and can be done at your desk if you have a high back chair with a pillow. If you're looking for a more try-hard deep neck flexor exercise progression, check out our video on the iron neck, here. For compression at the pec minor, the costoclavicular or subcoracoid space patterns, building the endurance of the muscles of the upper back is critical. For shoulder blade strength, face pulls are a great exercise to start with. Stretching the tight muscles and trapping the neurovascular structures is the second strategy for treating TOS effectively. Remember, a stretch should never be painful, but it's pretty normal to feel some symptoms when doing this because you are stretching the muscles compressing those structures. The symptoms should not linger for more than a couple minutes after finishing the stretch though. If you're uncertain about this, it's important to consult with a physical therapist to get a good gauge on how much is too much, or you can flare the condition up. If the scalenes are tight, you can start with gently stretching them with the same way we tested them earlier. If the pec minor is tight, the doorway test we discussed earlier can also be done to stretch them out. Nerve glides can be done for any of the three major nerves that branch off of the brachial plexus and run down the arm, including the ulnar, median, and radial nerve. Which glides you'll want to do will generally vary based on where you're feeling the symptoms. These exercises should be approached gently, and like the stretches, it's normal to feel some symptoms, but they can also flare up your symptoms if done too aggressively. We typically recommend no more than 10 reps a day. An example of a level one nerve glide for all the relevant nerves can be found here. These are examples of all the relevant level one nerve glides for the median, ulnar, and radial nerves. Persistent numbness or tingling sensations that don't resolve with rest should prompt immediate medical attention. This constant neural irritation can indicate progressive nerve compression that may lead to permanent damage if left untreated. Significant weakness in your arm or hand, particularly if it affects your ability to perform precise mouse movements or keyboard actions, warrants a professional evaluation. This weakness could indicate severe nerve compression or vascular compromise. Changes in your hand's color or temperature that persist even after position changes are concerning signs that require medical assessment. These symptoms suggest significant vascular compromise that could lead to more serious complications if not addressed. Pain that consistently disrupts your sleep should never be ignored. Nighttime symptoms often indicate progression of the condition and may suggest the need for more aggressive intervention. Symptoms that don't improve with basic ergonomic changes and rest require professional evaluation to prevent potential chronic issues. Early intervention often leads to better outcomes and faster return to normal activities. Your gaming or work setup isn't just about performance. It's your first line of defense against thoracic outlet syndrome.
Proper ergonomics can significantly reduce the risk of TOS by promoting optimal posture and reducing strain on muscles and nerves. Position your monitor so your eyes align with the top third of your screen, keeping your neck in a neutral position to prevent forward head posture. Ensure your keyboard allows for a relaxed elbow angle and a neutral wrist position, while your chair should be adjusted so your feet rest flat on the floor, with your thighs parallel to the ground. Place your mouse in front of your shoulder at the same height as your elbow to minimize shoulder strain. When using a controller on a couch, support your elbows and keep your wrists straight to avoid unnecessary tension by using a pillow for support. Custom-made gaming pillows like the Velari can be incredibly helpful. By focusing on these ergonomic principles of neutral, you create a space that supports your body and reduces the likelihood of developing TOS. We have a partnership with Velari, and if you're interested in grabbing a pillow from them, use code 1HP10 for a 10% discount. Think of your body like a race car. Even Formula One cars need pit stops. Set a timer for every 45 minutes and take a five minute pit stop to stand up and walk around, do some shoulder rolls, or do a quick stretch for your pecs and neck. You will be in a much better position to prevent thoracic outlet syndrome. When you're experiencing wrist pain or tingling, it's crucial to understand that not all hand symptoms are created equal. TOS can often be confused with other common conditions, but there are some key differences that can help you identify what's really going on. When dealing with neurovascular compression syndromes, it's really important to understand how these issues present. Typically, impingement syndromes present downstream from an entrapment site. This will help to differentiate between symptoms of these common issues. While both conditions can cause tingling and numbness, the pattern is distinctly different. Carpal tunnel syndrome typically affects your thumb, index, and middle fingers, like wearing half a glove. All symptoms are below the wrist. Any symptoms above the wrist could indicate TOS or another nerve entrapment higher in the arm. Additionally, carpal tunnel symptoms often worsen with wrist flexion or extension, while TOS symptoms typically worsen with arm elevation, looking up at your monitor, or sitting in a slouched position for long periods of time. Cubital tunnel syndrome, or compression of the ulnar nerve at the elbow, can mimic TOS because it can also affect the pinky and ring fingers. However, cubital tunnel symptoms are typically only seen in the hand, where thoracic outlet is more likely to be seen above the wrist. Cubital tunnel symptoms typically worsen when you bend your elbow for long periods of time, like when sleeping or talking on the phone, or apply compression to the inside of your elbow, like on a hard surface such as your desk. TOS symptoms, meanwhile, are more positional and often worse with shoulder and neck movements. Tendinopathy builds up over time from repetitive strain on specific muscles, and usually improves with endurance exercise. TOS develops from compressed nerves and blood vessels due to posture and positioning, and can sometimes worsen even with rest if you're in certain positions. Often addressing TOS can help resolve stubborn tendon problems that haven't responded to standard treatment. There's some key ways to help tell the difference. One, press on the painful area. If you can find a specific spot that reproduces all of your symptoms, it's more likely to be a tendon issue. Two, notice when it hurts. Tendon pain is the worst right after or during an activity, while TOS can persist regardless of activity level. Three, look for numbness. If you're experiencing numbness or tingling, particular to specific fingers, that's more likely to be TOS or another nerve entrapment. Four, check positions. If changing your arm position, like raising it overhead or slumping your shoulders dramatically changes your symptoms, that suggests TOS. Five, consider healing time. If your tendon problems aren't improving with standard care, you might need to check for an underlying TOS. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms and can't quite pin down the cause, it's best to seek professional evaluation. At 1HP, we specialize in distinguishing between these conditions and can perform specific tests to determine exactly what's causing your symptoms. This is crucial because the treatment approach differs significantly depending on the underlying cause. At 1HP, our team of physical therapists specializes in helping gamers and desk workers overcome TOS. We can help you identify your specific entrapment points and what nerve distributions are being affected, create a customized recovery plan, guide you through the proper technique as you do the exercises, monitor your progress, as well as adjust your program as needed. Visit us at 1HP.org for personalized online health coaching tailored towards your lifestyle. Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to like and subscribe to get more health content from 1HP.